Chapter 23 Then the king summoned all the leaders of Judah and Jerusalem, and the king went up to the temple of the Lord with all the people of Judah and Jerusalem, and the priests and the prophets, all the people from the least to the greatest. There the king read to them the entire book of the covenant that had been found in the Lord's temple. The king took his place of authority beside the pillar and renewed the covenant in the Lord's presence. He pledged to obey the Lord by keeping all his commands, regulations, and laws with all his heart and soul. In this way he confirmed all the terms of the covenant that were written in the scroll, and all the people pledged themselves to the covenant. Then the king instructed Hilkiah the high priest and the leading priests and the temple gatekeepers to remove from the Lord's temple all the utensils that were used to worship Baal, Asherah, and all the forces of heaven. The king had all these things burned outside Jerusalem on the terraces of the Kidron Valley, and he carried the ashes away to Bethel. He did away with the pagan priests who had been appointed by the previous kings of Judah, for they had burned incense at the pagan shrines throughout Judah and even in the vicinity of Jerusalem. They had also offered incense to Baal and to the sun, the moon, the constellations, and to all the forces of heaven. The king removed the Asherah pole from the Lord's temple and took it outside Jerusalem to the Kidron Valley where he burned it. Then he ground the pole to dust and threw the dust in the public cemetery. He also tore down the houses of the shrine prostitutes that were inside the temple of the Lord, where the women wove coverings for the Asherah pole. Josiah brought back to Jerusalem all the priests of the Lord who were living in other towns of Judah. He also defiled all the pagan shrines where they had burned incense from Geba to Beersheba. He destroyed the shrines at the entrance to the gate of Joshua, the governor of Jerusalem. This gate was located to the left of the city gate as one enters the city. The priests who had served at the pagan shrines were not allowed to serve at the Lord's altar in Jerusalem, but they were allowed to eat unleavened bread with the other priests. Then the king defiled the altar of Topheth in the valley of Ben-Hinnom, so no one could ever again use it to sacrifice a son or daughter in the fire as an offering to Molech. He removed from the entrance of the Lord's temple the horse statues that the former kings of Judah had dedicated to the sun. They were near the quarters of Nathan Melech, the eunuch, an officer of the court. The king also burned the chariots dedicated to the sun. Josiah tore down the altars that the kings of Judah had built on the palace roof above the upper room of Ahaz. The king destroyed the altars that Manasseh had built in the two courtyards of the Lord's temple. He smashed them to bits and scattered the pieces in the Kidron Valley. The king also desecrated the pagan shrines east of Jerusalem and south of the Mount of Corruption, where King Solomon of Israel had built shrines for Ashtoreth, the detestable goddess of the Sidonians, and for Chemosh, the detestable god of the Moabites, and for Molech, the detestable god of the Ammonites. He smashed the sacred pillars and cut down the Asherah poles. Then he desecrated these places by scattering human bones over them. The king also tore down the altar at Bethel, the pagan shrine that Jeroboam son of Nebat had made when he led Israel into sin. Josiah crushed the stones to dust and burned the Asherah pole. Then as Josiah was looking around, he noticed several tombs in the side of the hill. He ordered that the bones be brought out, and he burned them on the altar at Bethel to desecrate it. This happened just as the Lord had promised through the man of God, as Jeroboam stood beside the altar at the festival. Then Josiah turned and looked up at the tomb of the man of God, who had predicted these things. What is that monument over there? Josiah asked. And the people of the town told him, It is the tomb of the man of God who came from Judah, and predicted the very things that you have just done to the altar at Bethel. Josiah replied, Leave it alone. Don't disturb his bones. So they did not burn his bones or those of the old prophet from Samaria. Then Josiah demolished all the buildings at the pagan shrines in the towns of Samaria, just as he had done at Bethel. They had been built by the various kings of Israel and had made the Lord very angry. He executed the priests of the pagan shrines on their own altars, and he burned human bones on the altars to desecrate them. Finally, he returned to Jerusalem. King Josiah then issued this order to all the people. You must celebrate the Passover to the Lord your God, as it is written in the Book of the Covenant. 
There had not been a Passover celebration like that since the time when the judges ruled in Israel throughout all the years of the kings of Israel and Judah. This Passover was celebrated to the Lord in Jerusalem during the 18th year of King Josiah's reign. Josiah also exterminated the mediums and psychics, the household gods, and every other kind of idol worship both in Jerusalem and throughout the land of Judah. He did this in obedience to all the laws written in the scroll that Hilkiah the priest had found in the Lord's temple. Never before had there been a king like Josiah who turned to the Lord with all his heart and soul and strength, obeying all the laws of Moses. And there has never been a king like him since. Even so, the Lord's anger burned against Judah because of all the great evils of King Manasseh, and he did not hold back his fierce anger from them. For the Lord had said, I will destroy Judah just as I have destroyed Israel. I will banish the people from my presence and reject my chosen city of Jerusalem and the temple where my name was to be honored. The rest of the events in Josiah's reign and all his deeds are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. While Josiah was king, Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt, went to the Euphrates River to help the king of Assyria. King Josiah marched out with his army to fight him, but King Necho killed him when they met at Megiddo. Josiah's officers took his body back in a chariot from Megiddo to Jerusalem and buried him in his own tomb. Then the people anointed his son Jehoahaz and made him the next king. Jehoahaz was 23 years old when he became king and he reigned in Jerusalem three months. His mother was Hamutal, the daughter of Jeremiah from Libna. He did what was evil in the Lord's sight, just as his ancestors had done. Pharaoh Necho put Jehoahaz in prison at Riblah in the land of Hamath to prevent him from ruling from Jerusalem. He also demanded that Judah pay 7,500 pounds of silver and 75 pounds of gold as tribute. Pharaoh Necho then installed Eliakim, another of Josiah's sons, to reign in place of his father, and he changed Eliakim's name to Jehoiakim. Jehoahaz was taken to Egypt as a prisoner where he died. In order to get the silver and gold demanded as tribute by Pharaoh Necho, Jehoiakim collected a tax from the people of Judah, requiring them to pay in proportion to their wealth. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 11 years. His mother was Zebida, the daughter of Pediah from Rumah. He did what was evil in the Lord's sight, just as his ancestors had done. 